Sonic, the heart of your system. Hi and welcome back to another video. The other day I was surfing on AliExpress and I think just from my search history I was recommended a DIY water cooling custom loop kit for $75. And then I thought that is pretty cheap but it's probably going to be complete crap or garbage. And uh, yeah, st I still was tempted to buy it and eventually I bought it. It was shipped from Spain, which is interesting because in Germany, if you order stuff on Wish, for example, you always have, always have trouble with customs. And this way, because it came from Spain, didn't have any kind of like negative experiences with like shipping. It was here within a week, which is great. And now we have all those brown boxes, which apparently uh, contain our custom water cooling kit. Yeah. Let's see how this performs. We are going to test it on a 5950X. So first of all, we have to set up our test rig. We will test it first with a Corsair AIO just to get like a baseline number of temperature. And I think the Corsair AIO is probably like twice the price of this kit. Going to be interesting. Here is our baseline testing setup. Just a 5950X underneath this 280 Corsair AIO. Uh, 3600 memory kit and the RTX 3070. Just going to perform some Cinebench runs and probably some gaming to get an idea of the temperatures of the CPU. Running Cinebench R20 Multi, the CPU is completely stock right now and the temperature is in the region of yeah, 65, 66, yeah, well, close to 68 degrees Celsius peak. In-game temperatures measured with uh, FPS mon in case you're wondering because a lot of people are always asking about this measurement software is not using MSI Afterburner but it's using FPS mon and the temperature right now typically between like 55 and uh, 57 degrees Celsius about 10 degree lower than in Cinebench. Ordering this DIY kit was a bit like gambling simply because it was lacking a lot of descriptions. I mean you get pictures and you could easily tell that this has to be a 240 uh, radiator which is fine but then for example the CPU cooling block which is a block that reminds me of water cooling from like 15 years ago. I mean it's still plenty of surface area, should work, we will see. But I'm not sure about the mounting mechanism because it looks like it's only AM3 and not AM4. That was not detailed in the description. We'll have to test that. First step will be to find out if this is AM3 or AM4, but I just spotted that underneath there is also a GPU cooling block. <laughs> that is actually quite funny. For the price, not even mad. That is actually quite cool. And here we have our mounting gear. Just by aligning already to the back plate, you can straight tell that that's AM3 and not AM4. But I guess it should be po possible just to drill four additional holes in the mounting plate. Yeah, let's try that. I'm just in between moving to a new apartment and I already have most of my equipment already in a new flat. And that's why, yeah, we'll have to drive there to drill the holes quickly. The result is not beautiful, but I guess it will work. I mean, that hole is not that great. The other ones are kind of okay. It's also, I think it's stainless steel, this mounting plate here. And yeah, it's not that easy to drill with this small battery powered drill. If you have a proper machine, it should be much easier, but should serve its purpose. Because they're using this kind of universal mounting frame and mounting whatever plate for the CPU block, there is some potential that you yeah, get in touch with some of the components, which is probably not that great. I see a potential issue on top here with this capacitor underneath, but we will first have to remove the AMD stock mechanism and then see if it's actually touching the cap or if it's going to be alright. Considering the surface finish of this block, I think there was no need using this protective film, but it should be alright. I mean, that's why you have thermal paste to kind of even out all those kind of small scratches should be no difference to any other water block when it comes to just the plain surface finish. I decided to go for the M3 screws which were included for the GPU cooling block, but I used a quite yeah, unusual small drill I would say for CPU mounting. Usually you would go for like an M4 thread for CPU mounting simply because you can apply more force with those small uh, thumb screws or thumb nuts. But in this case, yeah, you can see it was just too close to the edge. This was already too close even with the three millimeter drill and four millimeter would have been too big. That's why I'm yeah, just going to try it with the GPU mount. 
I think it's not going to win any beauty contests, but yeah, so far so good. It fits. Sitting directly above the capacitor, that should be fine. We'll see how this thing performs. I also got the pump right here and the pump is also quite interesting. I mean, we have a four pin Molex power connector and we also have a three pin fan connector. Kind of indicates that it should be kind of adjustable. That is interesting for this price. We have G one fourth uh, thread on intake and outlet. Also, I mean, you could first get the impression that this is like a filter, but I mean, you just have the axis of the impeller sitting in there fixed. I guess that's the reason why it kind of looks like a fan. Yeah, that will be very interesting how this thing performs. Before I start putting our bundle inside a case, we are just going to quickly unpack and take a look at the rest of the components. I mean, just a reminder, this whole package was 60 euro and you get your CPU block, your GPU block, a pump, reservoir, and it, it doesn't even look bad. Honestly, it doesn't even look bad. If this stuff just doesn't leak, then I'm, I'm quite happy. And you even get those acrylic holes for the reservoir and they are injection molded. Those are injection molded acrylic parts, which means that there has to be some kind of quantity behind those sets. Otherwise you wouldn't do injection molded parts because you usually start doing those from like 10,000 pieces onwards or even more. That is, that is quite impressive actually. And uh, yeah, we're going to use soft tubing obviously. And this is like the standard size, which was used, I would say 15 years ago. It looks like 10 millimeter outer diameter and like eight millimeter inner diameter. It's something I haven't used for, let's say, yeah, like 15 years. And the radiator is quite impressive as well. Like the fin density is extremely high, which indicates that it could potentially have some kind of decent cooling capacity. It's also extremely light and that's because it's fully made out of aluminum, which I think would make sense also considering the price of this thing. And it also means that those fans, they have to have some kind of pressure to push all the air through those very dense th fins. Otherwise performance is going to be terrible. And I mean, that, that's going to be convenient using the tubes. Just put on your tube. Don't even need to use a fitting. And for like CPU block or GPU block, you would have those kind of fittings. I also have to highlight that it, it was very convenient to get this kit because I had the option at AliExpress to order it from Spain for whatever reason. Sometimes, at least ordering to Germany, if I order it from AliExpress and you get it shipped from China, it is very annoying because you have to have all those uh, paperwork for the import with the customs and everything. It's going to be very, like, very annoying and you have to add your VAT, which in Germany currently is 16%. Usually out of Corona times it's 19% and then yeah, at least ordering this from Spain, it was not a headache. All right, let's go. Dr. Sheik joined us to inspect our progress right now. You can see I mounted the reservoir in front. It was very simple just to attach it to the fan mounting brackets on this Corsair 4000 series case. And I don't want to say I cheated, but I added this 90 degree angled fitting on the bottom. Simply, it makes it a little bit more visually appealing. You can absolutely do it without it, but yeah. For me, this was just uh, the better solution. And then I thought I'm going to put the pump underneath. <laughs> uh, that is awesome. All right, uh, I thought I put the pump underneath and for that you can see I removed the front part. And by rotating the pump top by 90 degree, I can simply have the exit to the right, oops, and not to the top. I'm pretty confident if you would ask anyone, nobody would guess that this water cooling loop was only $60 or 60 euro. It was $75, yeah. I'm also sure if you spray paint probably the water cooling block, I mean, not even the entire block, maybe just the mounting kit itself and make it entirely black, it would give it even a higher quality look. But so far, yeah, that is, that is quite cool. Not even bad. Didn't you get enough camera time yet, Cheek? Yeah. I just hope everything will be fine, that it will be leak proof because, yeah, I mean, 
I don't want to get any water damage on like 5950X and RTX 3070, that would kind of suck, but yeah, we have those clamps on the CPU block, that should be safe. Same goes for the radiator, only maybe on the bottom, but I think also that should be fine. The flow rate of the pump is, is not even bad. I mean, you can hear some noise. Maybe it's possible to reduce the fan speed or the, the pump speed maybe. But yeah, the pump power, that's quite impressive. I think you can still hear it. I mean, you should still hear it. Yeah, I mean, the pump is now running at 60% speed. It's still, it has quite a decent flow rate. And you can see those bubbles in the reservoir, that's also funny. I think it's because this uh, yeah, acrylic pipe inside the reservoir is not 100% sealed to the top. And then you have some air going through the top part of the acrylic pipe. Because there is no, there is no air in here. You can see there are no bubbles. But then you suddenly have the bubbles inside here and you have all the, yeah, <laughs> you have like a bubble effect inside the reservoir. But it's, that's fine, I guess. Time to look at Cinebench R20 numbers. You can see it's already running. Temperature somewhere in the lower 60s, not bad at all, not bad at all. That should be pretty similar to what we saw before with the AIO. Yeah, that is pretty awesome. Gaming performance wise, it's about 3 degrees, maybe 4 degrees worse than the AIO, which I think is still quite a reasonable and impressive result. And I think I also know why the temperatures are higher. I guess it's due to the fans. They have not enough power to squeeze enough air through the radiator. If I just hold my hand above the radiator, there's not a lot of air coming out. I was just in between swapping the fans. I decided to simply use the case fan, which was included in the Corsair 4000 series case. The one from the back, one from the front. They should be strong enough, I guess. I'm not sure if you can see it, but... Yeah, it's leaking. Ah, that is not good. I will try if I can tighten this a little bit more, but yeah. Yeah, you can see some drops in the front of the case. It's not gonna damage anything, but it's also not cool. Corsair fans are installed as you can see and also on the bottom so far no leaks that is looking good and you know what else is good look at those temperatures it's exactly the same area as with the Corsair AIO it's like 56 57 58 okay it's like one degree higher but I mean one degree come on not bad at all the results were better than I originally expected. I mean, there were some negative aspects we have to keep in mind. First of all, it was leaking and that is probably due to like, there is no quality control. You have to do the quality check, quality control yourself, leak test everything and also like flush everything to make sure there are no residues in the radiator, no residues in the pump, in the water cooling block. Keep that in mind for sure. I also double checked. I had to pay 12 euro shipping, which adds up the cost to a total of 75 euro. It's still fairly cheap, I think, for the performance. And also keep in mind that you also get a GPU water cooling block in there. But I guess, I mean, there is no way that you can water cool your CPU and let's say a 3070 with this loop it would be too much for this 240 radiator. And also keep in mind that the radiator is aluminum and your water block is co copper and usually you should avoid mixing the materials. You can have some reactions in your loop and then it could um, block your CPU cooling block. You would have to always check that, maybe flush your lo uh, loop once in a while. Keep that in mind also that we added the Corsair fans, which were included in the case, they're not that expensive, but uh, to get very good performance out of it, we had to swap the fans because the original ones were not that strong, but I mean, you could use it. The 550X is not going to care if it's running at 61 degrees Celsius or 57 degrees Celsius. It's not going to care. There will be no difference whatsoever. Yeah, but 
I guess the result was not bad. I expected it to completely be garbage, like the typical Wish stuff you order online, but that was actually quite okay. All right, I was thinking about doing some overclocking, but it's already midnight and going to hop into bed. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Bye bye.